I want to give you a tip that I've learned about maggot esophagus in dogs. Our dog, Alexa, stop. Sorry if I set yours off. We just had our dog in our maggot esophagus dog chair for 10 minutes because we just fed him. And um, I got other videos about that and I'll put them in the link below. I really care if you're scared and your dog has been diagnosed with maggot esophagus and maybe you feel like this is some crazy rare thing and you love your dog. We get it. Um, so, uh, there's ups and downs. Shh. There's ups and downs. And although our dog Miko, who's a 12 uh, year old Lhasa Apso. He's a good boy. He has, we've had some scares, some, wait. Wait. Did it. We've had scares um, where we've had to rush him to the vet in the middle of the night because he was literally uh, like suffocating with fluid in his lungs that aspirated and it went back into his lungs. And it's very stressful when you are your your working family and yet you're running, race, rushing your dog, and you're up all night It's spending potentially thousands of dollars at a vet clinic. So that's a whole nother story, but our dog is doing fine now, and he'll get really good, and then he'll crash and get really, really bad to the point where we're thinking we're going to end up saying goodbye to him. And then he pulls through, and then he's okay again for a few more weeks, it's this constant up-down thing, and we've learned to live with it. So, I have gotten very good, and I know my wife has too, at paying attention to his breathing patterns and just really, really dialing in. When I'm sleeping, when I'm sleeping at night, so you're sleeping, you condition your ears to listen to him all night breathing. And I can tell if he's having problems. So if you wake up in the middle of the night to go pee, like I wake up in the middle of the night to go pee, I'll walk over to him and I check on him and I'll actually, I'll pet him and I let him know I'm going to pick him up. And I'll pick him up upright like a, like a big baby and I'll hold him and rock him back and forth. And I'm dead tired it's like 3 in the morning. And I'll hold him for like 4, 5, 6 minutes and then cup, do cupping and patting. If he's uncomfortable, and then I can hear the bleh, I can hear if there's any residual fluid or anything in his uh, esophagus, it will go down. And sometimes we have to put him in his chair in the middle of the night, but it's about uh, a very strict regimen of any time that your dog gets food or water or anything that they go in the chair. Uh, I built this chair. We have to make a new one. I literally put all this together. I'll put a link in the description below. But I put the dog in the chair and I also hold him up by his paws at different intervals. And I do padding and cooping on his sides. Cupping and padding. And, and pull his neck up and massage it. And I can hear he'll go <clears throat> Like it'll be like this thing, like the food has gone down. I'm not like a medical or veterinary professional. I believe I've just really tuned into my dog. And I can hear it go down. It's almost like the esophageal, the sphincter is, and the food needs to go through because of gravity. <sighs> if anybody tells you that, oh, you gotta put your dog down. Uh, don't believe them. I don't know the severity of your dog's issue, but I know for a fact we've watched miracles happen with our dog, and our dog got diagnosed over two years ago, and he's running around playing with a toy right now, and he's a 12-year-old dog, so we'll do everything in our power, no matter what. Um, to take care of our dog. Yeah, bye. Shh.